All right, setting up your spray gun, you need to think about how much pressure you're going to use. When you're working with a cup gun or a chop gun, something like this one right here, you want to keep your pressure down around 20, 25. You can adjust your pressure up or down from that depending on the viscosity or the thickness of the material that you're using and what you're going to be spraying. You don't want a lot of fallout and bounce off. You want your paint to stick, so you need to set your pressure accordingly. This one's got a gauge on it so you'll know where you're at and it stays constant. It comes off the compressor that's right here, which is set so that you don't overwork the compressor. Uh, this is set at like 120, the pressure coming off of it. There's a knob on here that will set it down to like 35, 40 uh, PSI. And then you can adjust your pressure on this one even down a little more. So the, all the pressure is constant going through. Uh, it really depends on the viscosity of the material. We use the one second rule. That means 1001, 1002. When you dip your stick into some paint after reduction, and it starts a drip, you'll count the drips, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and that should give you the right viscosity that you need for the type of material that you're gonna go on. This is a conventional gun, and you need to set the pressure on this according to the viscosity that you, of the material you're gonna put on. Because most materials, in order for them to hold up, because they are a sacrificial coating, you want them to hold up as long as possible, so you don't wanna over thin them, and you don't wanna make them too thick because they'll crack and then alligator and they break down that way too. So what we have sitting right here is a two gallon paint pot. And this is a conventional or some people call it a compressor pot or a pneumatic type pot. Pressure comes into this pot, pushes the paint down, pushes up to the tube, comes through the material hose, feeds into this gun right here and an airline is established right here with a regulator. And then you adjust your material here and your fan here in order to set the type of pattern you want and how much material you want flowing out when you pull the trigger. You can adjust this fan to either this way or this way just by turning this collar right here and turning the external fan. So right now I'm spraying this way. If I turn it like that, I'm spraying like that, up and down. All right, what we have here is an airless spray gun as opposed to a conventional or pneumatic or a compressor type gun where the material goes in here and air goes into here. This is a hydraulic airless gun where you only have a material uh, going into it. The adjustment is all in how you pull back the trigger, the types of fans that you put on. These are reversible fans where you can blow them out if they plug up as opposed to a straight fan. You can adjust the pressure on the airless itself by just turning this knob up or down and it really depends on what type of material you're going to use. If we're using a heavy elastomeric, we don't use any filters in the gun, in the gun or in the arrows itself. And we use a very big uh, tip, uh, like an 8, uh, 13, 8 uh, 27, a 9, 42, different, different tips. They even have them 10s and 12s where we blow in a lot of uh, heavy paint. If we're going to go with something uh, thin like a latex paint, a flat exterior paint for, say, a house. We want to control our fan. We don't want it really big. We may go down to a 413, a 417, a 515, a 517, something like that, where we can control control how much paint is actually uh, going onto the surface. We want to try to minimize how much bounce off in that. So to adjust the pressure on an airless, you have to start by looking at the reduction of the material, uh, adjustment on the airless, the type of fan that you're going to use or tip and really on a, a good working gun you can control uh, amount of paint by uh, pressure on the trigger.